My guest in the studio this morning, Stephen Henderson. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I am thrilled that you are here. Uh, Stephen contacted me through good old Facebook a while back and said, I have a daughter with a, do we call it a disability or we call it, what do we call it? You can call it whatever. It's a, it's a disability. <laughs> I want to call it it's what an, you want to call it's it. It's an ultra rare neurological disease. Um, and, it's, but yeah, that's, you can call it a disability. And you need to get the word out about uh, what is going on with her and a way that people can help. So mm -hmm. uh, first of all, let's start with who Stephen Henderson is. Somebody, Some people may recognize the name. You were born and raised in Pella. Yes. Yeah. Born and raised in Pella and um, uh, lived here most of my life. Went to school in Chicago and then came back and uh, began my professional career as a teacher at Pella Christian Grade School. Okay. So, so a lot of uh, students out there. Ma made a lot of connections students. with a lot of families yeah. uh, at Pella Christian in my time in the elementary school and in the middle school. And now? Currently, I'm a professor at William Penn University okay. where I work in the education department, training future teachers. There we go. So well, I that's went, fun, isn't it? I went from uh, people who, you know, <laughs> naughty elementary kids to now <laughs> naughty future teachers kind of thing. So... <laughs> Things haven't changed all that much, have they? No, they, they haven't. So uh, you uh, go to college, get married, start a family. Mm -hmm. You've got now four children. I do. I have four kids. So Elena, my oldest, she is nine. William uh, is eight. And we have uh, Adriana, who's three, and then Estella, who's almost two. Okay, so you have... Four kids, busy little family. You and your wife both work. Mm -hmm. Things are going good, though, right? Yeah, yeah. So our journey began, interestingly enough, Bev, um, in 2018. Uh, I had finally completed a very long stint in graduate school, okay. um, nearly 10 years of grad school. Wow. And wrapped it up, graduated, um, defended my dissertation, and then we had the baby, uh, Estella, and then graduated and everything was going perfect. And then that was in December. And then into January, we thought, okay, finally in life now we can just. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and then, in, and then in that... let's just go about our business, yeah. right? Yeah. And then in that February, just everything fell apart. That's when the things with Estella began. Um, she, as, a, as an infant, she started displaying odd behavior, which we didn't know what was going on. And so we rushed her to the emergency Describe room. Describe to me what, what, what's so odd behavior Odd mean? behavior was um, her head would become stuck one way. Her eyes would go completely opposite directions. Um, she'd become limp and almost unconscious. Um, and it's it just a very, very scary event yeah. to watch your newborn just all of a sudden go from perfect to that. And we took her to the emergency room, um, and they said, we don't know what's going on. Um, Pumped her full of drugs to go home. And we, we, we played this go to emergency room back and forth game for several months. In fact, some of them being so severe that we got rushed via ambulance um, to, to, I think, to blank several times. They even said it was to the point where they were going to life lighter if the ambulance didn't get there in a couple minutes. Wow. And doctor after doctor said, we have no idea what's going on. Um, until we had a neurologist in Des Moines who said, we need to do a genetic test. And we discovered that she has a rare genetic mutation. And this rare genetic mutation is linked with an even rarer disease called AHC. AHC stands for alternating hemiplegia of childhood. And when we got this diagnosis, there was not a single doctor in Iowa who could help us. Um, and so we're at a complete loss. A, the doctors don't know what's wrong with our mm -hmm. child. B, we have nowhere to turn in our state. So it's like, what do you do? My brother-in-law ended up starting Googling all these different things that we knew and came across a doctor uh, at Duke University. And so I cold, call, I cold called him. I said, here's what's going on. And she's like, you need to come see us. Within a couple months, we were at Duke. And we got an official diagnosis that Estella has AHC. Um, okay, can I just ask... When she would have these um, episodes, mm -hmm. was she in pain? Yes. They're, they're very, so her episodes, they manifest themselves in, in different things. Um, the, the, her, her limbs will stiffen. So it's, it's, it's like, a, you know, when you get like a cramp in your leg mm -hmm. or your foot, it really mm -hmm. hurts. Imagine that in your entire body. And not just for minutes or seconds. Some of these episodes last for days. And for some kids with AHC, they can last for weeks. Um, so she gets that. She gets... Uh, her eyes deviate where they go different. She becomes unconscious. She gets stiffening of the limbs. Um, hemiplegia is paralysis. And they call it alternating because it goes from one side of the body to the next or sometimes full body where she's completely uh, paralyzed. 
um, and she just has to be carried around. She's completely limp. So was um, there anything you could do for her when she's... No, no. There's, the only thing that you can try to do is you can try to give rescue medication that will lessen the severity of the episode, but there's nothing that you can do that can take these away. Um, so I it, can't imagine how awful it is. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a four month old mm -hmm. to before you actually even got a diagnosis. How old is she when she gets her diagnosis? A couple months later? She was, yeah, like six months. She was six months. And so these things are happening like how often? Um, that's a great question. S sometimes it will be um, a few days and then it happens again. Sometimes it'll be a week. We're kind of on a pattern right now where it's between like nine and 14 days before we have what we call a bad one. Um, for example, a bad one was Friday night. If things have been going well um, and we don't know what it was, something sets them off. So there are triggers, but these, the triggers that cause these spells are basically everything in life. If she gets too hot, if she gets too cold, if she gets in too bright of lights, if she moves too fast, if she stands too long, if she plays too hard, if she gets wet, there's all these things that are known triggers for this disease. Um, and you can't fight it. It's just part of our existence now. So I'm seeing life with three other children that still mm -hmm. want to be kids mm -hmm. and a lot of things that they do and want to do mm -hmm. sends her into a spell. Yeah. So we've often tried to weigh how do we continue <sighs> to try to have some normalcy um, in life and manage um, the disease that Estella has. And we came across a really good quote. It was on someone, someone else's AHC page. And this individual said, we're going to continue to do what we want to do with our other children. We're just going to do it with AHC. And that's been our motto. Um, so we left to camp. We're going to go camping. And Estella had an episode when we camp. That's okay. Lacey sits in the camper with her, or I do, and we take the other kids and we play until Estella can play again. Um, the kids include her very well at home. She'll be playing and um, an arm will just quit working or a leg will quit working and even the three-year-old Adriana will go oh mommy Stelly's arm doesn't work and that's okay Liam or Elena will just scoop her up and off they go and so it's just become our, a, what is a terrible thing to deal with has become our normal yeah which is an odd place to be well, what kind and compassionate kids you're raising yeah yeah Your other I, three I the, the people who grow up uh, with siblings um, and people in their family with disabilities, I think, grow up to have a real heart yeah. for what I would call the least of these. Yeah. You know? So uh, you've got this um, life-changing moment mm -hmm. in your family. Mm -hmm. And um, if folks want to just get a picture of this, I mean, she's a dolly. Mm -hmm. um, she's on our Facebook page. I borrowed that from yours mm -hmm. on the KCWN page. How do you look at your life, which was perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've done all this hard work. You've mm -hmm. both got careers that you love. Mm -hmm. The four kids, you've said, this is what our family is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And now it's totally different than what you thought it was going to look like. Yeah. Do you go, God, I don't understand. What are you doing to us? Absolutely. The, you know, there is nothing wrong with you can still have faith in God and believe in the ultimate promises and still look up to heaven and say, I don't understand what's going on at all there's a great story um in first kings where elijah one of the most godly men of the bible right he's done all these wonderful things he's maintained his faith despite all this stuff and finally he comes to a point where he's like i don't understand and the bible tells us I actually read it with my kids last night before bed uh, in the action bible which is fantastic yeah. um and elijah sits underneath the tree and he says god i'm done i'm yeah. just done and for a, a prophet, a man of God, to come to a point where he says, God, I'm done, I think it's okay for a professor to sit down and say, God, I'm done. Every now and then. Every now and then. Um, and so you find systems of support. I found an immense amount of support in um, the AHC community, the, the organization that I've become mm -hmm. affiliated with, AHCF, Alternating Hemoplegia Childhood Foundation. Um, we were talking about this earlier, how... There's something, it almost feels wrong to, to take comfort in other people's suffering because they, they get exactly what I'm going through. Yeah. 
So it really builds the sense of community, even though I've never actually physically met any of these people. Yeah. Um, and so you continue because we have to. I, my, new, my new mission in life now is to raise as much awareness as I can, try to raise as much money as I can. Have you ever heard people say to you, I couldn't do what you do? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard this before uh, in a situation that we face. And I said, you don't know. Mm-hmm. And when you love your family, you do what you do, mm-hmm. right? And, and I've heard people say that before, but I said, you'd be surprised what you do for your kid. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah. You know? And so what, what I'm ultimately hoping for is to raise awareness, to tell people that the suffering that we experience is like everybody else's suffering, just in a different way. Mm-hmm. And that it's okay to look up to heaven and say, God, I don't get it. Um, and I've, I found some real meaningful verses and some things that have carried me through that, a system of support the ultimate hope, but knowing on this side of heaven, we're going to keep fighting until, until we find a cure to this thing. I, you know, when you talk about this side of heaven, what's the prognosis for Estella? It's not good. The, the prognosis for a child with AHC is not positive. Um, some, about 50% of kids eventually by uh, age three or four develop seizures. Um, and these episodes can increase in severity. Um, What is not often talked about because it's just kind of understood in the community is that episodes, they can be fatal. Um, There are children who die from AHC um, fairly frequently around the the country and around the world. Um, And so the prognosis is that she's going to grow up with um, probably serious intellectual disabilities, um, physical disabilities. She won't be able to walk the way you and I walk. Um, So her, her, um, cognitive abilities or physical abilities uh, will all be severely hindered. Um, so we do an immense amount of therapies to try to counteract mm-hmm. that. You know, we do th- three or four, three therapies a week with various, you know, hospital and AEA and all these other people that are helping us. And we're thankful for that. But um, long term, um, as, as serious as it is for Estella, the doctors at Duke told us that she's doing relatively well. Um, compared to other AHC kids when you look at the numbers in this. When we talk about other kids, how many kids even have this? So that's a great question. AHC is an ultra rare neurological disease and it affects one in a million kids. So in the country, there are formerly diagnosed, not even three, but if you look at the numbers of people in the United States, there's probably closer to maybe around 400 kids in the country wow. um, who have this. In the state of Iowa, we know of three other kids, uh, There was a fourth, but he passed away two or three years ago. Um, He lived in western Iowa. Um, And so there's currently three kids, one in northeast Iowa, one in northwest Iowa. We're here in central Iowa, and another one actually in Altoona. Um, So there's four of us in the state of Iowa right now that have this. So it's when we we say rare. Ultra rare. You're Ultra rare. Yeah. You know, I I read on the, the National Rare Disease website or something. A rare disease is considered something like 256 out of one or something like that. And I'm like, oh, wow, one in a million. <laughs> <laughs> We're kicking that stat. So, wow. Yeah. It's just another part of your story that's just kind of makes your mind stop and go. Hmm. Hmm. But I, you know, talking to you, um, we've been talking kind of clinically about Stella, mm-hmm. about all the um, things that happened to her and what it looks like, and mm-hmm. um, tell me about. Stella the little girl. <laughs> Stella the little girl is incredibly persistent. Um, she she displays a, a level of grit. You know, um, she, she a while back, she she's just, so AHC kids are all uh, very delayed. So she she's almost two, but she's at like about a 12 month old cognitively okay. and physically. Um, she's just starting to stand and on good days, kind of cruise furniture um a while back she had um some dystonia which means her arm quit working and she will try to crawl with dragging that one arm and then she can pull herself to standing using one hand and one arm and get that one little knee up so she's got some determination she's incredibly persistent um she's also incredibly spoiled (laughs) her her brothers and sis- her her brother and her sisters um, do a wonderful job loving her very very well. Yeah. Um, Lacey and I have always been pretty firm with like you know you sit in your high chair and you eat yes. that kind of thing. And <laughs> Steli gets held quite a bit 
to eat. Well, I'm just looking at her, and I'd, I'd get her out of the chair. Any minute yeah. she wanted, I'd get her out. Um, so with what you're facing and knowing that it could get worse and the prognosis, mm-hmm. finding a cure mm-hmm. isn't something that you can wait for. No. No, this is truly a race against time. So the organization that I've become affiliated with, HCF, we're holding a, like a national day of recognition on October 4. Okay. And on that day, we're simply trying to raise awareness, raise funds, uh, and it's it's race um, race to end AHC. And it, it, Bev, it really is a race against time. There are these AHC kids, we don't have time because time is against them. Um, the longer that kids have AHC, the more disabled they will become. And sometimes um, irreparably so. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, um, I would assume at some point you reach mm-hmm. you reach a point where even if the cure is available, right, we can't go back. Right, exactly. Um, because sometimes, like they'll have really serious episodes, and they will regress so significantly that they will never gain that back. Um, so some some kids have even regressed to the where they were speaking and doing things and they had such a severe episode and then they lost that ability or they lost the ability to do certain skills that they never got back. We're in a race against time when we talk about trying to cure this thing. Um, so my purpose here and is... The, and the, sometimes we talk, talk about um, our super rare disease mm-hmm. and the cure is so far out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, it seems hopeless that... Right. It's going to take years and years and years, mm-hmm. but you're not at that pl- point no. right now. No, we AHCF with the, some of the leading neurologists in the, in the world, um, along with another organization, uh, two other organizations, um, have been funding research. Uh, it's called genetic therapy. The fancy term is AAV and it's genetic. It's genetic therapy, gene therapy, where scientists go in and they genetically fix the stuff that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and AHCF is funding research, um, and we have mice in labs that have AHC, and they're trying to fix this thing mm-hmm. in these mice. Mm-hmm. We're, we're doing that. They have an ambitious goal of being at human clinical trial by 2022. Um, that's incredibly ambitious, yeah. and if we're gonna, I don't know if we're going to make that, but when we talk about needing to raise money, we're, we're talking tens of millions so we're we're doing a fundraiser right now in October, and our goal is to raise a hundred thousand dollars. But that is that is a drop in a very very large ocean of money that's going to take to cure this thing. But we had our, it became very apparent. So it's to not me, like just every family that has this can sell candy bars at Walmart and get enough no, money to make this happen. No, no, we're we're talking. We need we need gr- federal grants. We need um, people of financial means who are open. Uh, philanthropic individuals mm-hmm. who are willing to give substantial amounts of money. Um, but it became very apparent to me, Bev, I became very passionate about pursuing this recently when we were talking to our neurologist. We had our annual evaluation with, mm-hmm. with him at Duke uh, this summer via telehealth. And he said, he, he point blank said, if we got enough money, I think we could do this. He's, he's, the, he's one of the leading researchers in the world. And when the leading researcher in the world looks at you and says, if we get enough money, I think we can fix this thing. I will passionately pursue that goal uh, until we reach it. Yep. So, th- but the other thing, you know, what I was talking to you about what we're trying to do here is w- we're not going to cure this thing unless people even know what it is. Right. They've even right. heard of this thing. So we need to raise awareness. Mm-hmm. We need to raise up a community for, for me. I, I don't know. I can't speak for all AHC families, but for me in our situation, we need to raise up a community of prayer warriors who will be frontline defenders for these kids who are suffering because when and when, their families and and their families, because when these kids are suffering, everybody is suffering, and and it is incredibly painful to watch your kids scream for hours, days on end because they are in pain and you can do nothing. It's in those moments where those families and those kids yeah. they need prayer so so badly. Um, so not only covering the kids in Iowa in prayer, but yeah, all kids with prayer. It's become one of my daily things. God, today, please just let every kid with AC just. Just give them a good day. Yeah. So, so the the biblical uh, you you pray for daily bread. You know, you, you yeah. pray for daily manna. Yeah. AHC families are very aware of what it's like to to walk a, every day, to live in every day, because you never know what the day's going to be. So, Lacey and I's prayer every morning is God, just give us one good day. That's all we want, just one. So, we need to raise awareness. We need to raise funds, um, and I want 
and the obvious reason that we're doing what, what, why I'm doing this, Bev, is because I want my kid to be well. I want the other kids in Iowa, Dax and Vera and uh, I think Brady, um, I want them to be cured. I want all my friends across the country and across sure. the world to be cured. But while I was telling you about this, I've become more acutely aware that when Paul writes in the book of Acts and he talks about the powers and the principalities, mm-hmm. our fight is not against flesh and blood, but the powers and the principalities. When you read the Bible, we understand that for a little while, Satan and evil have been given control of this planet. God's got them on a leash, but they've been given this world for a while. I am 100% convinced that something as evil as AHC is a direct result of the fall and of what evil is doing in the medical world amongst all the many other disease, terrible diseases that are out there. I think AHC is one of them. And I think it's particular, particularly insidious because it targets children mm-hmm. in a very, very painful way. And what I was telling you is I want, I want to cure this thing because I want my kid to be well, but I want to cure this thing in the name of the reclamation of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine what would happen on this planet in this country yeah. if we could if we could cure one of the rarest genetic diseases and say we did this because we want our kids to be well but we also did this because we want to say no to the kingdom of darkness yeah. we're taking it back could you imagine the power yeah. of that story and so praying for this well cause, i can imagine you telling it yeah <laughs> praying for this cause giving to this cause if we can do this it is an it is actively advancing the kingdom in a, in a powerful powerful yeah. way against the powers and the principalities so I'm not, I'm not just fighting to raise money to cure my kid. It, it, and again, this is my perspective. I can't speak for other people. Yeah. But I view this as an, as an active part of reclaiming something yeah. that is broken. Maybe that's just my reformed side coming out too. I don't know. <laughs> that's okay. We let that happen here all the time. Um, so tell us exactly what we can do specifically to help. Mm-hmm. I want listeners to pray for Estella. But I want them to also pray for all kids with uh, AHC and their families. It is a very, very difficult life. Um, they need to be covered in prayer. I know. I asked you when you came in and we started talking about this. I said, so when do you sleep? You don't. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't. You, well, you know, if you have a kid that has a bad cough or asthma or whatever, and they have a spell, and you, mm-hmm. for a couple of nights, you just, you, mm-hmm. you're on the edge, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got to be on edge all the time. I yeah. can't imagine. Yeah, you are. And so... The prayer that has become meaningful to us is, God, give us a good day. Yeah. Just pray for many, many good days for Estella and for other kids. Um, if God places it on your, you know, I want people to be prayer warriors in this cause because this is, we are up against a level of evil that is powerful. Yeah. It's powerful. And this is going to take a community of believers to fight back, to say no. Um. We need public awareness. We just need people to know what this disease is because mm-hmm. people aren't going to be willing to help us if they don't even know what it is. Right. So we need to raise public awareness so people can help by just simply being aware. And then, of course, it's, what we need is we need individuals to give to this cause, whether to Estella's cause, to AHCF. Um, but the difficult thing is that we have this fundraiser and we have this goal. We need to reach $100,000 uh, in October in order for AHCF to continue their mission to end AHC. That is critically important to the cure, to, to get this organization continuing to move forward. Um, but ultimately, we're going to need to raise up a community of people who are aware and who are willing to give because we're, we're talking an immense amount of money that we're going to need to raise. Um, so we need people to give, not just now for this cause, which we, we desperately need, but long term. So it's this um, that has become part of our, our monthly tithing that Lacey and I have done is just simply we give some to the church yet, but then we also give some to this organization. We, we view it as our way of being able to give back a little bit. Um, so I'm going to uh, we're going to post our conversation on the KCWN page and we'll put a link mm-hmm. um, to the fundraiser that you have going on right now. That would be wonderful. I noticed that people are giving an odd amount of money. <laughs> so what happens? One hundred and three thirty or a thousand thirty. 18 what's that, that's, that about that's because so the organization hcf they rather than using like a paypal or um uh, you know whatever they have their own company that they work with yeah and there's a three percent processing fee 
for, oh. for every transaction. So if you're giving a hundred dollars, it turns into a hundred and three thirty three, right? <laughs> yeah, because of because of the numbers. I thought I was missing something there. No, no. There's it's, okay. It's it's what it's factoring in the processing fee, oh, okay. so that when we go to do the transaction for the organization, it's it's already there. That's what that's. Well, about. last night when I checked, your goal was ten thousand mm-hmm. for Stella's page, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. since you went over it, you raised your goal. We did. So <laughs> what we did, good for you. What we didn't understand, Bev, is um, when we. We set a we set a target, and we said we have no idea. Like we were in two weeks, we met our goal. We were blown away. We were humbled by the level of yes. giving that exists just yeah. in our little community of people. Yeah. Um, and what we didn't hadn't released yet is that we're also holding a physical event on October four. So October four is like the main date for the big organization. Mm-hmm. But we in town um, at the Pelican High School parking lot, we're going to hold a a five k race where people can come and go between one and three. And they can run um, this route in honor of AHC people and to raise awareness. And meanwhile, me and a couple other people, we're going to run a relay marathon while everybody's doing this. So we're going to be constantly running while everybody else is coming cool. and going and yeah. running. Um, and that was another part of like one of the many tentacles that we had planned for fundraising to try to reach sure. our goal. And so we hadn't even launched that yet when we had met our initial goal. We are like, whoa, <laughs> people are giving. Like this, yeah. is, this is meaningful. So – we, what we need to focus on now is, yeah, we have our own goal, but remember that all this money is going to the organization and the organization, they need a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. That's the ultimate goal, yeah. you know? Um, and we're just trying to do well, our, there's sm- still work to be done. There's still work to be done. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for sharing uh, your story. I'm so sorry that, um, this is happening to her mm-hmm. and to your family, mm-hmm. but I can't help but be. Um, the word, I can't come with the right word. It's proud, but not in a prideful way Mm -hmm. of how you're representing your family. Mm. I can tell from, uh, talking to you and watching your eyes that you love this little girl with all your heart and would Mm -hmm. do anything for her. Mm -hmm. And that's part of telling her story. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as a body of Christ, we are called. Mm Mm-hmm to come alongside each other, mm-hmm. uh, not just for good times and, and those kinds of things, yeah. but when life is hard and when for some families it's just hard all the time. Mm-hmm. And so we're called to be a part of that. And so as you're asking for people who can pray, I know there are people listening who are fantastic prayer warriors yeah. and, and you've seen the power of prayer. Yeah, absolutely. And so people can do that. And there also are people who are equipped and able to give. Mm-hmm. in such a generous way that can yeah. make a difference. You can see the finish line from here. Yeah, you can. You can. And not just for Steli, but for all kids yeah. with AHC. Yeah. You know, we can, we can end this thing together with, yeah. with the right people. So if you want to know more on the on Facebook, I just Googled Stephen Henderson, and there's all kinds of information <laughs> on your page. So you can do that, or um, we'll get the links to the fundraiser and everything up on the KCWN page. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share about Estella and our cause.